so hello friends in the last video class the last lesson what we have discussed is the number of ways what we have discussed once I will write the number of ways of distributing the number of ways of distributing n identical objects the number of ways of distributing n identical objects into r distinct boxes r distinct boxes that is same as without any restriction right without any restriction without any restriction what is the meaning of this without any restriction the meaning is this the box may be empty may not be empty okay so every each and every box contains any number of objects there is no restriction on that a box may be empty also right so the number of ways of distributing n identical objects into r distinct boxes without any restriction is what is same as the number of it is same as the number of non negative non negative integral solutions the number of non negative integral solutions of the linear equation what is that linear equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus up to so on xr is equals to n is what what we have written n plus r minus 1 c r minus 1 so this we have seen in the last class so if you did not watch this go to that video and watch first before watching this okay right so here what is r in this what is r in this r is number of boxes and what is n number of objects the right hand side number what you are seeing in the equation it is nothing but the number of the number of objects how many objects how many identical objects given to you and what is this r represent this r represent number of boxes this r represent number of boxes okay now here what we are going to do is now little bit changes in this what we are going to do is let's say mm, for example the second condition means the second derivation okay in a different situation that is the number of for example if I want the number of ways of distributing the number of ways of distributing n identical objects n identical objects same into r distinct boxes are distinct boxes but here the condition is no box remains empty that is the restriction we have in this the number of ways of distributing n identical objects there also n identical objects we are distributing here also n identical objects we are distributing there also we have r distinct boxes here also we have r distinct boxes but here the condition is here we have no condition no restriction on this but here we have a restriction so that no box remains empty so that no box remains empty so what is the meaning of this no box remaining empty means each and every box must have at least one object okay each and every box must have at least one object in the box right so how we will do this the same way how we done how we done the first first uh, derivation the first derivation how we did in the same way we can do but instead of that what we are going to do we will take the help of this we will take the help of this to derive this property okay actually the result is this n minus 1 c r minus 1 is the result okay number of ways of distributing n identical objects into r distinct boxes so that no box remains empty is what the number of ways is what n minus 1 c r minus 1 so how we will get this n minus 1 uh, c r minus 1 with the help of the con property or with the help of the derivation what we have already 
okay let's see now now what is the work we have to do here we have to distribute this n identical objects into what are distinct boxes okay now let's say here we have the first box second box third box we have r distinct boxes okay let us suppose i am placing x1 objects in the first box x2 objects in the second box x3 objects in the third box like that i am putting x r objects number of objects we are placing in the rth box is xr so if you add all these variables number of objects in the first box plus number of objects in the second box plus number of objects in the third box up to so on number of objects in the rth box must be equal to total number of objects right because we are distributing all the identical objects into these r boxes so therefore x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus up to so on xr must be equals to n but what is the condition here no box remains empty no box remains empty means first box holds at least one object so therefore the value of x1 is minimum one the value of x1 is how much minimum one similarly what is the value of x2 is also minimum one at least one object should be there in the second box also at least one object should be there in the third box also each and every box must hold at least must have at least one object in that okay so therefore each xi each xi must be greater than or equal to 1 okay each xi greater than or equal to 1 for what i is equal to 1 as well as 2 as well as 3 up to so on r so what we are going to do here this equation i am going to change now x1 from this we will write x1 minus 1 in place of x2 i will write x2 minus 1 plus up to so on for each variable i am subtracting 1 for each variable i am subtracting 1 so therefore total how much we subtracted minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 r times means minus r we subtracted that okay so r is subtracted from the left hand side so we have to subtract from the right hand side also n minus r <coughs> sorry now what i am going to do here in place of this x1 minus 1 in place of this x1 minus 1 i give a new symbol for that say that is capital x1 okay here capital x1 is x1 minus 1 and x2 minus 1 i will suppose as capital x2 plus up to so on capital xr this i am supposing as capital xr which is equal to n minus r okay now let's go to the next slide here i'll write so what i got in the last slide x1 plus x2 plus similarly if you want you can write one more x3 plus up to so on xr is equals to what do we have here n minus r okay now in this what is x1 x1 is x1 minus 1 which is greater than or equal to 0 already we know that so x2 what is x2 is x2 minus 1 this is also greater than or equal to 0 okay like this each and every xi is what xi minus 1 which is greater than or equal to 0 so here x1 is greater than or equal to 0 x2 is greater than or equal to 0 x3 is greater than or equal to 0 xr is greater than or equal to 0 means these x1 comma x2 comma x3 up to so on xr are what are non-negative integers non-negative integers they are non-negative integers so at the end what we have to find here we have to find the number of we have to find the number of non-negative integral solutions we have to find the number of non-negative integral solutions of this equation say number one or number two i'll say number of non-negative integral solutions of two so already we have the formula for that number of non-negative integral solutions of this this say x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus up to so on xr is equal to n what is the formula you have n plus r minus 1 cr minus 1 have you got this words listen r minus 1 means number of variables r is what just now i told you r is what here number of boxes and n is what right hand side number represents the number of objects so n right hand side number will be your objects and number of variables will be r so here is the new equation here i got a new equation little bit converted right original equation is different and what we have now is different but you see how many variables are there totally r variables are there so therefore if r variables are there the answer must be like this cr minus 1 
okay and this r minus 1 should be added to what so this r minus 1 should be added to the right hand side number right so here we have n minus r so n minus r plus r minus 1 if you want once you can check once again you check here n is the right hand side number in the equation so here we have right hand side is n minus r okay there we have the formula n plus r minus 1 c r minus 1 these r minus 1 this r minus 1 should be added to the constant which is in the right hand side of the equation so here in the right hand side of the equation you have n minus r so therefore n minus r plus r minus 1 c r minus 1 that is number of non negative integral solutions so here plus r minus r cancel so you got here n minus 1 c r minus 1 so for this second equation how many solutions are there that many solutions will be there for this also okay the number of solutions of this equation is same as the number of solution of this equation so if you say it has 10 solutions obviously you are going to have 10 solutions for this okay so number of solutions of this equation is same as the number of solutions of this equation so therefore what we can write now what we instead of this i can write the number of the number of positive integral solutions number of positive integral solutions of the original equation what earlier what we have the equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus up to so on x r is equal to n is now we got that n minus 1 c r minus 1 so this can be used whenever you want to distribute identical objects into the boxes so that every box contains minimum one object in that case you can use this formula n minus 1 c r minus 1 which is nothing but number of objects the number of identical objects actually i am writing simply object the number of objects minus 1 c the number of boxes the number of boxes minus 1 okay number of objects minus 1 c number of boxes minus 1 so for example how many ways if i ask you a simple question simple basic question on this how many ways 10 identical toys 10 identical toys can be distributed among can be distributed among four children so that each child will get at least one toy each child will get at least one toy so this is nothing but the number of positive integral solutions of what four children so you can say x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 right so for first child he will get x1 toys and second child will get x2 toys third child will get x3 toys and fourth child will get x4 ties the total number of toys is equals to n so indirectly what is the question is the number of positive integral solutions of this equation okay what is the formula we have the number of objects is 10 minus 1 c number of boxes or number of boxes here number of children right so 4 minus 1 which is 9 c3 you can calculate this easily 9 into 8 into 7 by 6 okay so 3 to the 9 3 to the 6 2, 2, 3, 4, 12, and 12, 7, 84 ways. Okay, so whenever at least one object should be placed in the box, then you can use this formula n minus 1, c r minus 1, with the condition, right, with the restriction. If there is no restriction, we use the formula. What is the formula we use if there is no restriction? n plus r minus 1, c r minus 1. So here, distribution of identical objects into different boxes with no restriction and the second thing is what distribution of identical objects into different boxes with restriction what is that restriction each box contains at least one object right but how to solve the problems using these two concepts now we have to extend this idea sometimes it is not possible it is going to be very difficult to solve the distribution problem using only this one so we will use sometimes generating functions okay we'll solve some problems on this in the next lesson after that we will see how to use the generating function to solve distribution problems little bit more advanced okay so thank you for watching